Alright YouTube, so we're back of course talking about some Final Fantasy VII Remake. What we have today is actually a follow-up to our last upload. And why it's a follow-up is in the last video, we looked at and kind of discussed the Zangin piece of concept art. And it turns out that that's not actually new. I had several people comment on that video and point out that that's actually a piece of concept art that was for the art book that came with the deluxe edition of the game, going all the way back to the launch of Remake. So this shit's been out for like seven months now. This isn't even remotely new. And a lot of what we're going to look at in this video isn't even new. It's new to me. Might be new to some of y'all. It's kind of on me, right? I never really looked at this art book. I assumed that the art book that was coming with Remake was going to be full of shit that we've already seen. But there's actually quite a few new things. Now we're not going to look at this entire art book. Obviously it's like 60 or 70 pages or something. And most of it you've seen if you've played the game. But there are some stuff I want to look at. Like some character stuff some location stuff and mainly the one thing i want to look at is like the weapons that are in this book that are not in the full game so we're just going to hop right into it right here we have some concept art obviously on the left is Claude's mom on the right is Ifalna, Aerith's actual mother but in the middle we have tifa's dad and i don't know how much we've ever seen of him he was obviously in the original game but i don't really remember and some of you out there might know is if in the original game we ever got to see or interact with this character before he got killed i don't recall that and when it came to Crisis Core, and we got to actually play out the Nibelheim Incident segment, I don't recall if we ever interacted with Brian Lockhart. I haven't played through Crisis Core in a lot of years, my dudes. I don't remember a lot about this game. I remember lore stuff, I don't remember, like, the subtle things. And what we've seen of Big Bry so far in the remake games has been relegated to a corpse on the floor, so... The <laughs> So this concept art that came with the Deluxe Edition would have been our first look at Brian Lockhart in the Remake Universe. We also got to see a good look at him with, like, I believe it's the Ultimania or something, whatever this is from. Here we have concept art of Leslie, Kyrie, and Johnny, and there's not anything super new here, but, like, what the hell is Johnny's concept art? What are, what are these balls? Is he, like, a sports guy? Because that, that had nothing to do with Remake. This was, I don't even recognize these balls at all in the entire Remake Part 1 game, so I don't understand how that pertains to his character. Has he been a sports guy in the past? What am I missing? Here we have concept art of Johnny's parents, and obviously I remember his dad, you interact with his dad multiple times throughout the game, but I don't recall ever seeing his mom, and if she is in Remake, let me know like which chapter and where she's at exactly. Here we have some enemy concept art, and obviously what we're talking about here is the Genova Pod concept art. What's with the gigantic heart, man? Is it real? Is, it, is that Genova's heart? Or is it an artificial heart? Is it a biological heart? And if it is Genova's... Then what's with the smaller humanoid body? I always took that as being Genova, but it can't be possible if the heart belongs to Genova. We've seen Genova in the pod in multiple FF7 works, but I guess we've never really seen that lower half part, or at least I've never noticed it. Like, has there always been this gigantic, massive heart? This I wanted to point out because it's concept art for the Sector 5 slums, but with all three of these images, I don't recognize anything. This looks like the most likely thing that could be in Sector 5, like this... Could be like some background buildings that I just didn't really pay attention to. This doesn't look familiar at all, but it does look like it could be the weapon shop, obviously because of the weapons on the goddamn wall or something. But I don't know, like maybe, but this also looks like it's kind of in a trailer almost, like the way this is designed. So I don't exactly know if this is in the Sector 5 slums, but it looks like it could potentially be if you kind of looked over the counter in the weapon shop or the item shop or whatever. This definitely does not look familiar. This is massive, dude. Look how tall people are right here. These are humans. And this goes way the fuck up here. There's nothing like this in the Sector 5 slums. I wish there was. Here we have some weapon concept art, and there's several things to talk about. For one, we've seen Jesse Biggs and Wedge's weapons in the past. Was not aware that Wedge was carrying around a goddamn grenade launcher, dude. I thought it was like a shotgun or something, like a, some kind of assault rifle or some shit. Was not aware it was a fucking grenade launcher. The main thing of interest here, obviously, is Scarlet's weapons. She has a minigun, and she has an RPG, which is strange for several reasons. For one, we barely have any of Scarlet within Remake Part 1, so why does she have weapons? Secondly, she didn't even we didn't even fight her in the original game, but also her having weapons would imply that she's going to fight at some point, so does that mean that there's supposed to be a boss fight or something with her in Part 1, or does that imply that there's going to be a boss fight with Scarlet in like the future games at some point? Because when it came to the original FF7, we technically never had a fight with Scarlet. And why I say technically is because we never fought her one-on-one -on -one like we did with, say, Palmer, for example. But we did fight her with, like, the Proud Clod. I believe her and Heidegger were in the Proud Clod when we destroyed it. I presumably killed her as well. And the only other thing we had that could be kind of considered a fight, if you want to call it that, is whenever Tifa slapped the shit out of her. So here we have Cloud's weapons that are in the art book. Half of these are in the game, half of them aren't. This is the Methyl Saber, this is the Twin Stinger, this is the Iron Blade, this is the Nail Bat, and this one's not in the game, and these three are not in the game. This one looks a lot like the Rune Blade from the original game in terms of the shape of the actual blade. Overall, the swords look quite different. 
The sword on the far right somewhat resembles the organics from the original game, but it's not exactly similar. But they both have, like, the back of the blade at the top has, like, a jagged part coming out, which is pretty distinct, which is the only reason why I think it might be a modern version of the organics. And these last two right here don't really look like anything. Going down Claude's list of weapons from the original Final Fantasy VII, there's nothing that even looks remotely like these. They look cool as fuck, but they don't look like anything from the original game. This looks like damn near like Nightmare Sword from Soul Calibur. If you get that reference, I love you. And this one just looks like it'd be like almost like the ultimate weapon. It looks almost like a, some sort of holy sword of sorts. Not like the ultimate blade or sword or whatever it's called from FF7 that was Claude's actual final weapon, but it looks like it would be a Ultima sword or something. So here we have Barrett's weapons from the R book, and despite there being only six weapons in remake for each character, somehow nine of these are Barrett's weapons from the game because this is the Gatlin gun, but this just looks like a different version of the Gatlin gun. And then here we have the Wrecking Ball, and then here we have the, what is it, the Steel Pincers, which were the Atomic Scissors in the original game, but this is the same thing, just kind of closed. Here's the Big Bertha, here's the LMG or the Light Machine Gun, here's the EKG Cannon, but this... Gun below it looks pretty much the exact same as the EKG cannon, and this one looks like the EKG cannon, but like without the underneath part, really. Like they look pretty much the same as well. The bottom left one could be the solid bazooka from the original game, and I only say that because of the wider barrel that it has compared to all the other guns in this picture, but that's really the only comparison that it has to the solid bazooka. And the one in the middle with two barrels could either be the W machine gun or the assault gun, since those are the only two from the original game that have two barrels on them. But again, it doesn't look like either of them, really. When it comes to Aeris weapons that are in this art book, most of them aren't actually in the game. The far left one is the Reinforced Staff, the far right one is the Arcane Scepter, and the four in the middle aren't in the first remake. And to be honest, scrolling through Aeris weapons in the original game, like, none of those four weapons look anything like these, because Aeris had a lot of, like, one-sided weapons in the original game, whereas the weapons in Remake, pretty much all of her weapons, you can kind of flip around, and each side looks the exact same. Like, there's no top side to the staves. Whereas these, there's plenty. So as far as I can tell, those four middle weapons are brand new for Aerith. And lastly for the weapons, we have Tifa's Gloves. And at least three of these are in Remake. We have the Metal Knuckles right here. We have the Sonic Strikers. And we have the Feathered Gloves. And this is possibly like an early concept art for the Leather Gloves, potentially. But the Leather Gloves only have two material slots. This clearly has three. And it doesn't look exactly like the Leather Gloves. Plus, the Leather Gloves have like metal part plating on the knuckle part in the back of the hand. The top left weapon, based on the original game, should be the Mithril Claw because of the material slots, which is three with two connected. But there are a couple other claw weapons for her in the original game, so they could maybe swap them out or something. In these last three, I don't see anything that looks like them on her weapons list from the original game. Like, these two right here look almost like plate armor or something like a medieval knight would wear over their hands. And I don't see anything in the original game that has anything like this rectangle thing on the back of the hand. And oh, we say the very best thing for the very end of the video. The last thing we're going to talk about from this concept art book is probably the most important thing in the entire book. They actually have a concept art or image for Warning Board. Yes, that obscure, odd enemy from the Shinner building in the original game that's like probably the worst enemy design ever conceived for a Final Fantasy game. They actually conceptualized how to put this thing into Remake, and here it is. They made it into some sort of like robot or something that drives around. It's called Mobile Monitor. And this is unironically my favorite thing in this entire book just because of how weird the enemy was in the original game. And they actually still tried to come up with a way to put him into a remake. Or it, I guess. I'm so defeated and sad knowing that there was an idea for it, but it didn't make it into the game. Like, if I could have been exploring the Shinner building and turned around a corner and this thing was there charging me, I'd have laughed my ass off. But anyways, but dudes, that is pretty much the video. Kind of jumping back in time a little bit, but it's new stuff for me. Maybe some new stuff for you guys out there. This video, as usual, was a lot longer than I planned on it being. And let me know when it comes to the weapons. Like, the weapons that I thought were new in the concept art and weren't based on any of the weapons in the original game. Like, let me know if they actually are. Like, I don't see it for all those weapons, but maybe you guys do see it. But holy shit, man. They actually tried to put my guy Warning Board into Remake. That makes me happy and sad at the same time because it didn't actually make the cut. I did have some videos a while back about enemies from the original game that might not make it into Remake. And he was absolutely one of the ones I hated on and trashed. And they actually tried to, at least to some degree, but obviously didn't make it. Anyways, my dudes, I've taken up enough of your time. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the show if you guys already wish to did more Final Fantasy VII Remake content. Turn on my notifications. Follow me on Twitter, the David, and my Discord. Links to my social networks are in the description and in the outro. Later, guys. Used to care what people thought, but now I care more. I and mean, nobody out here's got it figured out. So
therefore I've lost all hope of a happy ending Depending on whether or not it's worth it So insecure, no one's perfect We spend it with no shame We blow that, like Coltrane We in here, like Rogaine Or leave it, like Cobain